camera recording. I don't remember my name. Main camera recording. Recording video. And you are back. Camera recording. Uh, Audio recording. There you go! Am I in the shot? Yep. Oh, I'm trying I'm never lying. <laughs> Hi everybody, and welcome to episode 8 of Knights at the Round Table Season 3. Today we are discussing the book The Hunter's Moon by O.R. Melling. It is uh, the first book in the Chronicles of the Fairy? Of Fairy. Of Fairy. Sorry, fair. Chronicles of Fairy. Uh, and I'm going to start with general impressions of the book. I will start with Jasmine, because she hasn't why? been here for ages. That's why you shouldn't start with me! <laughs> um, well, I guess I kind of have two sets of general impressions of the book. The first from when I first read it, which was at least 15 years ago. Um, and at that point, I completely loved it. I found it, it, what captivated me the most about it when I first read it was, it was really the first book that I'd read that where a Canadian girl was the main character. I was reading a lot about British children heroes or American and so I was like wait this could be me I mean she was a little older than me but I'm like in a few years this could be me this is great so um that was what really drew me in the first time I read it and revisiting it now many years after I've lost my own copy of the book so I haven't had a chance to reread it in a while um I still really enjoyed it, but I think it was more from a nostalgic point of view, where I still was like, oh, I remember how much I enjoyed this book, and it's still such a nice story, and it's still, like, it still has a lot of really good elements to it, and, uh, it's making me happy. Eric? Um, I read it, I calculated about 20 years ago, probably about when it was published, maybe a little bit after. I think it was 91 it was published. I thought it was published in the 80s. Am I no, crazy? I think it was 91 or 94. Oh. It says at the beginning. Anyways, either way, I read it very young, and at the time, I think it screwed me up for all fantasy slash fairy things, because it now reading it, I see all the stereotypes that they're making fun of, but I didn't notice it at the time. I just assumed, yeah, okay, all girls like fantasy. Great! And, oh yeah, fairies, they're dangerous. Don't mess with them. They're not little things. Uh, but yeah, it, it did not survive as well as I'd hoped. Mm -hmm. it, I loved it at, at 13, 12, 14, whenever. <laughs> and, but there are parts of it that I just roll my eyes at yeah. now. Yeah. Okay, yeah, for me, um, I did not previously read this book um, until last week. And the book was, yeah, it was alright. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pleasant <laughs> my childhood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a pleasant way to spend two hours. I mean it's a short book, mm -hmm. it's a quick read. Uh I have no it took me five. major <laughs> complaints, really. Uh for a very young reader I think it would be great, but for me this book would have lost its charm by the time I hit twelve. I my ideal reading point for this book probably would have been around seven or eight. It feels very young to me. And there's a lot of emptiness that a little more detail could have made the book so much better so much better uh, that said there's a lot I appreciate about the book uh, the proper description of the Fae except for the part where they do end up being tiny little things with gossamer wings that ticked me off but that was really more of an illusion than an actual yeah I guess like, but that still wasn't, really their... wasn't that their punishment for what no. they did to the king what? I no. thought they, bitch, the the ones who were in the forest. Talking? No, those were goats. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, there were goats a... are little things with wings that flit around, right? <laughs> goats are, or sheep or something like that, if I remember rightly. Like, I mean, I don't yeah. remember much of the book even one week later because it just wasn't that memorable for me. And there, I mean, she used a lot for mythology, which was brilliant. Mm -hmm. But then there were things from mythology that was missing. That were missing, beg your pardon, I can grammar. Um, I would have loved to have seen <laughs> I would have loved to have seen actual characters from the actual other world myths. Mm -hmm. I would have loved yeah. to have seen Sly Silverhand, for example, or his father Madawidan, or like a whole bunch of characters. Yeah. <laughs> 
Because it, it, I'm a Celtic studies nut. So no. Anything, no. What? Anything to do with it really gets me excited. And I was super excited to read this book. And it was pleasant enough, but there was so much missing. And there were things that I thought should have been left out. I mean, I... Uh, I just... I have such an issue with the whole... I just met you, and I'm now in we're in love. You. And <sighs> that was part of the detail that was missing because it could have been believable. It could have been, but it was just like. But it was just la 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 la. Yeah, there you go. yeah. I, I gave like, it a I, pass for the fairy. Yeah, the fairy king. Yes, no. that made sense. It was the Dara thing. Yeah. And I was just like. He was such an interesting character. Yeah, that they I didn't did remember with, him at with all. Him. Exactly. They did nothing with they him. They did nothing. I didn't remember him. The whole book felt like it should have been three books in an epic fantasy style, but it was written as if it was for young kids. It's really frustrating I how think much depth was missing. That's it exactly. Yeah. There was no depth. I and felt like they... Sorry. No, keep going. I just... I, I felt like it, it was sort of conflicted as to who the audience was. It was yeah. like trying to simplify the writing style for a younger crowd while like trying to throw in these elements of romance and whatever to join the teenagers it's like you kind of got to pick a demographic and making and sure that they're old enough that it's not weird they're walking around alone yeah 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 no I, <laughs> as a kid i remember being like yay this is so cool but even the last part um, just the transformations. Mm -hmm. I read it this time, and I was like, "This is nowhere near as cool as I." But it was thought. so epic in my memory. Oh yeah, it was like, so epic. There were special effects and everything in my memory. Oh my brain. god, it, yeah, it was fantastic. And then it was like ten pages, and I was like, "Really? That's it? Wow!" I know. I was getting so close to the end. I'm like, "This, I really? Yeah, <laughs> this is so much more drawn out in my brain." <laughs> yes, actually, the whole ending of the book really was lacking for me. Rushed. It was, right. so, it was rushed. so rushed. It felt incredibly rushed. That last battle could have been something phenomenal. Yeah. And with just a teensy bit more depth to all of the characters and the scenery and the, the action. And the, <laughs> and the villain. Yeah. Yeah. Just Nothing a little bit more. Just a little bit more and I would have been sad to watch the king walk into the lake. But at, when it happened I was just like all mm, whatever. Yeah. Well, I remember I remembered that part. Yeah. I, I remember I, being sad about that. Like that was one part that I really remembered in my brain is it was like I mean it was like some of the major deaths in Harry Potter the way it affected me at the time when I first read yeah. it. It was like and but for it it just it, it all ended so fast. Yeah. But yeah. I do have to say this was one thing that I appreciated when I first read it and again reading it. I kind of like that they didn't win necessarily I, I would have liked them to put up more of a fight well exactly if well, it had been again, more if drawn out yes yeah. the battle could have been epic um I didn't like that the king returned but again I think that was where they didn't know that's why there's three other books I think I don't know I haven't read the others no, you I, read, I, I read the <laughs> second one and I don't think you showed up did he really I have no idea I don't idea. remember it's the fairy king yeah it's, sure his but. memory was taken and his immortality was taken but still the very fact that he showed up just cheapened the whole thing but again I think that was they didn't know their audience they were like uh, kill yeah, him for it, the it was teenagers very much who will be able to school. handle it and uh, bring him back in case the little kids are sad yeah okay. you know also this is a, a part that I dislike in fairy tales and in a lot of other books I complain about it with eddings the what is it called purple prose or the extra like flowery descriptions that suddenly happen for a paragraph and you're like okay yeah okay keep going yeah it, it, it was all of a sudden like oh his wispy coal black eyes stared into her soul as the <laughs> crinkling leather of the soft book I was like what <laughs> You can't spend two seconds explaining how this person has a personality, but you're explaining, like, in purple descriptive prose. It would have worked for a fantasy for adults. Yeah. Right, yeah. And my point was actually about the descriptions. I mean, I didn't notice it so much this time, but, again, the first time I read it, I remember, I mean, even then I did know that I, I, liked, the, I liked the descriptions I mean, they were fairly simple, but it was the descriptions of the scenery that I liked. Yeah. And I had never been to Ireland when I first read it, but then when I did go, I was like, oh, it's just like I imagined it from all the all the descriptions in 
in yes. Hunter's Moon, and I would go around and I'd be going through the forest. I'd be like, I can imagine this scene happening here because this looks like what that, and you know. So that was, I, I thought that. The, the scenery and the areas were described well. It's just it was sometimes when it got to describing people. Like, people, and sometimes fairies or, like, the transition. It just got long. Yeah. Um, but I, it's very reminiscent of uh, romantic writers, like Shelley and all of them, yes. with the way they talk about nature being revivifying and yes. strengthening you. And I, I'm not a big fan of romantics uh, other than poetry. Poetic tree? Poetic tree, yes. It's a tree <laughs> that talks back to you. Uh, so it's me. In rhyme. <laughs> Your tree? Uh, yes. She could well, be. That explains the roots. She's never leaving. Meh. <laughs> All right, this is why my, she doesn't drive. One, yeah. One of my <laughs> biggest <No> issues. <laughs> Leave her alone. Oh, oh, oh no. Your face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> All right. Her bark's worse than her bite. Oh, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make, and this is a problem that I have consistently with books written for young um, readers, is that writers, adults, really underestimate the sophistication of yes. young children. And it drives me up the wall. It drove me up the wall when I was little, and it still drives me up the wall because they are so much smarter than a lot of these writers seem to give them credit for. And this book isn't giving its audience enough credit. Well, maybe not in depth of story, but language was okay. Oh no, language was uh, fine. Although I, I would have liked some But I'm talking about thematically. Yeah. I just can't remember feeling so proud of myself when uh, Gwen was having the conversation with the French girl at the pub. I'm like, I understand, I understand all the French. I was yeah. like 10 years old. I'm like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. You can't have Canadian a, win! <laughs> you can't have a Canadian book where there isn't some French in it. Exactly. I mean. <laughs> uh, no, but genuinely, it annoys me because this story could have been really gripping. Even for, for, I mean, for young people, I suppose it would work. Not for me as a young kid because even as a young one, I was... Written post-Harry Potter? It would have been way better. Harry Potter was when pe publishers let then. people do more than 200 pages. You mm -hmm. could have more than a 50,000 word story. That's what it felt like. She had a dead, an amount That's of words... That's not necessarily true. I mean, The Hobbit was written for children. Yeah, but that was before there was a children's market. Yeah, I, I, I guess... In the 60s, 70s, 80s-ish, it was 50,000 to 60,000 words for a children, for a young adult novel. No. Okay. Now they go up to 2,000 words. Uh, 2,000 pages. Sorry. 2,000 words. Oh, 2, boy. Words. I don't know if I can get through that. <laughs> so I think she could have put more depth. And I haven't read the rest of the book, so I don't know if it gets the more rest of the detail. Series, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it grows the way that Harry Potter grew. Because as Maybe. Harry Potter advanced, the stories got thicker, more complex, and well, three books they all look about two hundred pages. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't remember them getting more complex. More complex. Mm. Yeah, that's disappointing. I do think but. that the audience was underestimated; that they could have handled a lot more than what the book offered. Is yeah. my point. Yes, and there was some trimming she could have done to some of the characters that were completely and utterly useless. Like, you could have removed whole sections with the um, red-headed prince dude, the, the, the yeah. second in command. See, the second in command. Mirrodin? Mir Medir. Medir. Medir, yeah. Totally useless. <laughs> but Medir. in my head, he was the one who was with them at the end, not yeah, Dara, because I forgot forgotten I about Dara. <laughs> yeah, that's what I assumed was at the but end. But Medir, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. because he was in the entire <laughs> book. Except for the end. Except for the end. There's a little bit there. Well, they he mentioned that he became king. And he flirted with the red-headed girl, because everybody has to have a romance interest, right? Yep. Everybody in this book has to have a romance interest. But this is, like, I feel like, yeah, I just felt like it was, the audience was confused, and I felt like if mm -hmm. she just picked a, she just needed to pick a style, or yeah, yeah. Pick, pick an age range and go Stick for with it, it. Yeah. instead for, of, yeah. like... For the level of the story and language cut out the romance, make them five years exactly. younger, and you've got an awesome, like, uh, the one that we read two seasons ago. Uh, the cup on the front, it's green. 
Um, the, the cup on the front and it's the, the three little kids and their crazy uncle. Oh, oh Overseer under, under Stern. That one. Oh, uh, yeah, Susan Krupa. So yeah. it would have been that age group would have been perfect. Like, yeah. the actual characters that age. Yeah. yeah. Or make it bigger, get rid of some of the weirdness that wasn't good and make it flesh it out. Flesh it out. Because yeah. the style makes me think, yeah, no one's going to die. I never, even as a kid, knew. Mm-hmm. I never was worried that they were going to die. Yeah. Yeah, which does take some of the fun out of the book. But that that said, it was pleasant enough. I mean, oh, yeah, I, it was it's got the foundation read. of a really good story. And yeah. Other than the the prose, which sometimes annoyed me, overall it was so simple to read. Mm-hmm. Like it, it flowed. It never felt choppy or badly written. Yeah, yeah, that's um, true. Yeah, I did. I enjoyed. Uh, apart from the purple uh, parts, but I did enjoy the prose. And some of it, like the landscape descriptions, was very evocative. And maybe I'm being too harsh about the purple prose, because it's very fairy tale ish Yeah. Yeah, but without the, the depth that actual fairy tales have. <laughs> like, even the short fairy tales are sometimes scary as hell. Yeah. yeah well, and I, f- I feel more reading is, a fairy tale than I did reading this book. This is why mm. my parents have a paving stone in the backyard that I got for my birthday one year that says, Don't piss off the fairies. Nice. We were trained from a young age. Mm-hmm. Don't piss off the fairies. Yes. Agreed. Don't. What you learn from this? I remember, I mean, I, I again, I read a lot about fairies. I spent summers just, like, getting all the nonfiction books about fairies out of the library and learning. And so it's like, as soon as they're like, let's sleep at Terra, I'm like, you guys are dumb as toes. <laughs> Do you know nothing? How this is this is like fairy one oh one. You don't invade their territory. I'm like, oh my god, you had this coming. Yeah. Sorry. But like I actually hadn't read anything about fairies before this. At the time all I was reading was D and D uh fantasies and like epic science fiction as a model uh-huh. hard stuff. So this I had no idea. This everything I know about fairies was in here. Actually I found some scenes in this I have stolen without knowing. <laughs> There's a, a fox in it that is exactly oh, yeah. the same oh, as in one of my books. Yeah. And I didn't even realize. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My Actually, so- yeah, I should have made a note of that because when I was reading it, I was like, eh, Eric's fox. <laughs> but, I mean, it's 15 years difference between reading it and writing it, so yeah. I had no idea. Besides which, you didn't really steal it. I mean, it's I mean, a mean, common theme, yes. but I notice a lot of her tropes and themes are things that I have adapted over time, mm-hmm. whether because of her or other novels, I don't know. Or, you know, actual myths. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Real myths. Yeah, real myths. Mm. Real myths. <laughs> <laughs> Shush, they're real. They're just so ancient that people forgot that they were real, that's all. You and your clue mythical for centaurs going to happen yesterday. <laughs> I'm still upset. One thing that hit me about the book, and that's kind of... I don't know how to put it, but all the male characters... Whenever they're confident and boisterous, they succeed. Right. All the female characters, whenever they're confident and boisterous, they get smacked down. Like, well, Gwen is all that. like, I'm awesome. I've been beating the prince every single time. Yay. Oh, look, an apple. Yeah. And then, like, at the end, we're the goddesses. We're so powerful. And it's uh, each of the girls that go down first. Yeah. I don't know. I, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but it just felt like if no, you're confident, just... you're going to get smacked. Like, but only if you're a girl. Only if you're a girl. Yeah. I didn't get it when I was reading it. I was just like, oh no, don't eat an apple given to you by a little kid. Have you not seen a horror movie? <laughs> or Snow White. <laughs> or Snow White. <laughs> yeah, that too. That wasn't a horror movie? It kind of was. Which was pretty scary. <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, mm. One of the things I really liked, uh, you said earlier, I liked the Canadian connection. Yes. In this book, I thought it was very cute. It did piss me off that it was Toronto. What? <laughs> Just because everything's Toronto. I'm over Toronto. And I was like, of course, <laughs> it's a Canadian girl, so obviously, where else would she be from? I think the but, author's uh, from around Toronto. Isn't yeah, she? she is. But that I, I, just, I couldn't forgive that. Where are you from? Me? Yeah. Montreal slash oh, okay. Ottawa slash a Toronto? whole bunch of places up north <laughs> yeah. slash <Okay>. Winnipeg. <laughs> All right, that makes sense. <laughs> and, uh, I remember reading it. Inuvik and, like, and Baker Lake. <laughs> yeah. Even even me as a guy reading it as a yeah. guy, I was like, "Yay, a Canadian!" Because it was rare. Yeah, it was so that rare. It wasn't a Canadian being made fun of. Yes, Canadian who could be a hero. Yeah. And had to tell people she was Canadian and not American everywhere she went. <laughs> and. 
it frustrates me that you said you read the rest of the books and that she is not the main character in the next one, at least. Not in the next one, yeah. But it would have like been nice to see more of her now that she's grown a little. Yeah. Yeah, you they know, kind of was... smack you in the face with that growth, too. Instead of having like a character mention it, it's written in the prose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That ticked me off. Yeah. Although it felt like she was thinking it. But yeah. Yeah, even even still. I mean, I had noticed it and I was like, oh, oh, good for her. Oh, okay, now I'm being told. Yeah. She, and that's yeah. the thing, that's the you gripe I have about. Out. Yeah, you don't need it spelled out. And children mm-hmm. don't need it spelled out. They're mm-hmm. smarter than that. So, Well, some children. <laughs> some children are deaf as, dumb as posts. Dumb as posts, well. Says, says the two people who are reading epic fantasies at five or six years old. No. I was reading Madeline and Charlotte's Web. Epic fantasies. Charlotte's Web wasn't fantasy. It totally happened. <laughs> Spiders can talk. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine the screaming in the middle of the night? <laughs> I'm stuck in the toilet. Help! <laughs> okay. I mean, Charlotte's Web didn't get me to stop eating bacon, though. I just feel sorrier for the bacon. <laughs> That was a great book. It was a fabulous book. I haven't book. read it. Oh, um, really? I watched the movie. Um, oh, no, read the book. Mm. The book is beautiful. I got Pink Eye when I was three, and my dad read it to me then. Okay. So Final, it's better than Pink Eye. It is better than Pink Eye. Final thoughts <laughs> on the book? Um, it's it's a f- better than Pink Eye. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun book. It was an interesting adventure. Um... And in the future, I'd probably reread it, maybe read the rest. I don't know. It was quick to read for me. It, for me, it was quick. For everyone else, it was really quick. <laughs> um, it's something that I, is so squeaky clean that I have no trouble letting any kid read it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That's kind of my thought, too. It's, like it's, a, it's a nice book to remember and think about and think about how it definitely... Is kind of one of those milestone books in my evolution as a reader. Um, and I look forward to someday reading it to one of my children because I think that well, my children will be disowned if they don't like fantasy. So, <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, this will uh, this will help with that. Yeah. If I catch them young enough. <laughs> <laughs> and that is all. Uh, yeah, I agree. It was a pleasant enough read that any child could pick up. Any child of reading age would be able to read mm-hmm. this Even book read to. Uh, or, yeah, or even yeah. younger having it read to. Which actually, so this book I wouldn't mind reading to a very, very young child who can't read yet. Uh, and it was a pleasant enough read. I mean, there was nothing inherently wrong with the story. It's just I was really bugged by the lack of depth Mm -hmm. and I was really 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 bugged by uh, the underestimation of young readers which is a a continual problem for me for young adult Uh, there are a few young adults we've read that are not part of that like Tamora Pierce's Terrier Mm -hmm. it's a brilliant young adult book Uh, that doesn't underestimate its audience at all so yeah that's my thought star rating Jasmine Uh, I mean a lot of it the nostalgia is playing in, but three and a half out of five? Yeah, that's fair. I'll say the same, three and a half, mostly for nostalgia. I probably would have given it a two, if not, but three and a half. Uh, Nostalgia doesn't play a factor (laughs) in my star rating, so uh, two and a half stars, Uh, which isn't, it's not terrible, but it could have been so much better. The the seeds of an incredible story were there. It needed some fleshing out, I think. It's more disappointing because of its potential. Yes, that's yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because it, it's, there was so much potential, it's so quite much disappointing. There. All right, Jasmine, you get to pick the next Yay! book. Yay! What, she picks an Allison book of the Fallen series? <laughs> I have to find that one. Say a prayer, everybody. Ah, Bloodhound by Tamora Pierce. Ooh. Oh, yes, that's the next one in the... Yeah, in the so you're just saying how much you liked it. Yes, I'm really looking forward to this then. Uh, uh, fleshing out the series a bit more. So in two weeks' time, we will be reading Bloodhound by Tamora Pierce. If you have any... Uh, thoughts or opinions on O.R. Melling's The Hunter's Moon, do leave a comment down below. Uh, Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next week. Bye. Oh, also we're on YouTube and... Wait, of course we're on YouTube. We're on on Facebook and Twitter. (laughs) And YouTube. If you haven't seen YouTube yet, go to YouTube. (laughs) Shut up. (laughs) Don't do it.
know where you are watching. YouTube has videos on it and stuff. <laughs> it's a <laughs> magical land. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say that sounds like fantasy porn. <laughs>